Finally, after 24 years, Hundewasser is go in Whangarei. That's how long it's been since the revered Austrian artist sat down at the town basin, eyed up the old harbour board building and sketched a design to transform. Designed by the late Austrian artist, tore the town apart for years. The PM and her entourage swept through the region today bearing gifts. To meet building costs that have escalated in the past year. Uh, the construction of that centre alone will create 60 full-time jobs. And that's before Finally, you look at... Sure. My says after years in the economic doldrums, the city's now being courted by developers. Oh, something tall. Yeah, they've got that pencil, like, in the car, 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 Well, I didn't know he was famous. He didn't talk about himself as being this big time artist or anything. I'd never seen any of his paintings or anything like that, so I didn't know if he was really what he was. He was just this guy with these gum boots and odd socks and shirt buttoned up wrong, colourful hat. Just said he was sent, and the eye might be interested in saying the flag. So I said, oh, let me read about it first. He had pamphlets of what the flag meant, and he didn't go into things lightly. I mean, he was very fussy about how the flag was sewn. That was the little one, and I would have to cut them and double hem, not just one hem, it had to be doubled. He didn't want to take our flag away, he wanted us to have an identity. Now we look at that flag, if you don't look at it right, you think we're Australia. You know? So he just wanted New Zealand to have an identity, and the identity was the kuru. And how he did it, he picked a kuru every day and laid it on this bed in a room, and he watched it. I think he said he did it for about a month, watching them and not one of them closed, they all opened. So he said, that was New Zealand. It's always open. Frederick really, really loved Kava Kava. And he always said, Kava Kava is a real place. When he came from Europe, where he was the big shot, he came to Kava Kava and he was Frederick. He treasured that tremendously, the humbleness of it and the simplicity. He really enjoyed when people didn't know him. Frederick came for the same reasons to New Zealand as I did. We found out years after we met that it was a book written by an Austrian taxidermist, Andreas Reischek, a very lively book about the New Zealand bush. And it really fascinated me. I could smell the bush. And then later on, I learned from Frederick that the same book brought Frederick to New Zealand. There were, of course, people who knew Frederick's art and they respected Frederick greatly, but they lived all in Auckland, I think. There wasn't a bedroom in Ponsonby, I reckon, in the 70s that didn't have a Huntavasa poster. This unique and amazing and very contemporary artist was amongst us. And we felt that he loved us. He did this extraordinary thing because he tried to terrify me. He said, come and look in the bush. And he took me to a cave and said, I want you to come into the cave. Sit on the chair, Mayor. So I sat onto a stool, really. And he said, do you know much about wetters, Mayor? And I said, yeah. He said, look above you. And I looked up and the whole of the top of the cave was covered in cave wetters. And he said, I collect them. And he had a bucket in his hand and he started to hit them and the wet has poured over me and he's laughing. You know, it's a test. 
I think Frederick had a great respect for New Zealanders. He respected their genuine friendliness and he appreciated tremendously their clever ways to, to make a living under, under often tough circumstances. We were living in a bus. My baby had asthma and I asked the guy who sister owned here, could we rent it? And he said, OK, I'll ask her. And she said yes. And then they came and said they were going to sell it. Frederick came to visit me and he said that anybody will walk in here and feel like they belong here. And I said, yeah, they're selling it. And he said, oh, how much do you need? I give you money for deposit. And right there and then he handed me over $5,000. And that was our deposit. And I said, OK, I want to write down that you had given me this money and I will sew the flag until I've paid it back. He said, no, no, I want to make sure you are OK. I just started crying. I thought that a man I'd only met a couple of times would do that for me, you know. Most people go through life and they're predispositioned by education and being moulded through schools and kindergartens and work, you know, they've been moulded into what they are and they function on that line. But Frederick was, was certainly a, a very unmoulded spirit. I think he was always driven by a thing he was just focusing on, whether it was artwork or a, a beautiful architecture. His spirit created something very unique and special, very disciplined and very observant and persistent. Frederick said to me always, you paint so sparingly, it's so precious, it's, it's, it's a taonga, it's so sacred. And it is, he's right. I paint on canvas, I stretch it myself, I, I prime it myself. But Frederick got even further, he glued sheets of paper on the canvas and then he put his gesso down on, you know, and on, on that and he, he created a slightly uneven, very living base he painted on. It was already alive before he even touched it with paint. So it already told you a story. It was accessible art, but it was also bloody good art. His work was a statement of love, of landscape, of, of what cities are about. He put so much of his own energy, I reckon, into the building, into his art. He got it. Because all his paintings, my favourites were the teardrops. We all have tears. It's a healing. Tears are a healing. Well, to Māori it is. Even a man, when a man cries, it's a healing. Some men think, oh, I'm not a man if I cry, but it's not true. You're more of a man if you cry, and Frederick was like that, very caring, very emotional. When he walked into a room, peace just came over the whole room. Frederick was, above all, an ecologist. There were some trees on his land growing too tall. The power board didn't like that and they said, well, you know, you have to cut those trees down. And Frederick talked about it. He said, I can't cut these trees down. The, the trees have much more right to be there than, than this power line. The trees are much more important. So he decided to get rid of the power, not be disconnected from the power. I learned so much from his beautiful, loving way of feeling nature is part of us. We are part of nature, we have to respect that. And if we lose that contact, we actually lose it. And I think that's a bit the state of, of our planet now, that we are losing that respect and that intimate connection. He wasn't coming here to change us. He was coming here to give us life. For Hundertwasser, New Zealand was his second home. He loved New Zealand, passionately. So we can share, give something back, you know, and that was the spirit lives here too. Pour the wine and raise a glass, good cheer to friends present and past, to memories, fond and not forgotten. A pledge to love as we have known, for in every heart a home, 
and in each the bonds of love unbroken. And let us toast another year and pray 